Hello? Hello, hello. How are you? Um, until now, fine. Okay, okay. So I have a, I have a question for you. You are a Muslim? Yes. Can you give me the answer before the question? Uh, what, what do you want to answer for? No, I mean, aren't because a Muslim usually he have the answer, but he don't have the question. One minute, one minute. So how come you have a question? Because isn't it your Muslim you claim that all the questions is answered in the Quran? So can you give me the answer? So, sorry, sorry can, you, can you say that one more time? It cut out. Isn't it your Muslim you claim that all the the answers is given in the Quran? Yes. But what is the questions? What questions? Well, the Quran is an answer for everything, but the Quran did not mention to us the questions. No, I have, I have a question on your religion. I know, I know. But how come in your religion, you got an answer, but nobody knows the question? What do you mean nobody knows the okay, question? I, I will make it simple for you. If I ask you why Muhammad is a prophet, do you have an answer? Uh, yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. Prove me wrong. Go ahead. Because he was chosen by Allah. He's what? He was chosen by Allah. I don't understand. He was what? He was chosen by Allah. Okay, hold on. I just said to you, this is the question. This is not the answer. How Muhammad is a prophet of Allah? You said to me he's chosen by Allah. This is the question, which means, let me rephrase it for you. How you know that Muhammad is chosen by Allah? You said to me because he's chosen by Allah. So what is the, you don't know, you, you are giving me the answer without knowing the question. What is the question? So the question is, how he was chosen? What is the proof? You give me, you give me an answer, which is the question. The question is, how Muhammad is a prophet of Allah? You said to me because he's a prophet of Allah. So let us make it simple. What is your proof that Muhammad is a prophet of someone he's called Allah? Because it is mentioned. So what? I mean, there is many religions, they mention many things. My mom, she said to me, you are so handsome. If you look at my picture, you will get scared. But because she is my mother, she think I am the most handsome boy in the world. But this is my mother. Even if her son looked like a monkey, she think he is handsome. So it's, it's mentioned by her that I'm so handsome. I go to speak to a girl. I say, want to marry me? She said, what the heck talking about? Get out of here. So it's mentioned. Mentioned by who? By Muhammad. One guy. He said, I'm handsome. Everybody say, you are. Not. Nobody even saw him. So Muhammad, he mentioned that he is a prophet. And then there's no witnesses. Did Muhammad even spoke to Allah? Never. Did he hear the voice of Allah? He communicated through angels. Oh, hold on. If there is anyone saw the angel? Nobody. What do you mean communicate with the angel? I communicate with many angels every day. Just take some hashish. All the angels will come to you. You start seeing things flying around you and you know. So what do you mean? Who communicate to Muhammad? No, but okay. If we talk about Muhammad communication, we will die laughing. As an example, Muhammad received Quran, correct? Yeah. All right. How he received Quran? Do you know? So how how uh, what? How he received Quran? How would I save it? How he received it? Like the angels told him Quran? Is that how it is? Yes. No. According to your prophet, he hear a sound of a bell. A sound of what? Bell. Do you know the sound of a bell? So show me where it says that. It says here, from, 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 they ask Muhammad that the angels, they come to him and they speak to him by the ringing of a bell, which is teredim, 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 teredim. So how the sound of a bell became a Quran in Arabic? That's just that's just one verse, bro. You need the context. What verse, my friend? The angels. Bro, they read more. You just you just picked one verse, bro. I don't know. This is another verse. They asked Muhammad how you receive revelation. 
how you do receive revelation. He said, it come to me in the harshest way, which is the sound of a bell. Read it. This is another verse. This is a hadith of your prophet. So, so, so what? But what's, what's your point? What, what do you mean? This is this is an, this is a person who is suffering from mental illness. If Allah gave him a sound of a bell, how would it become Arabic Quran? Have you ever heard Arabic in sound of a bell? Like, is that a language? Huh? Yeah. Translation. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi labbil alameen. Why do you have a bell? This is, uh, I'm receiving a revelation. You're not an angel, are you, bro? What? You're not an angel. What, what do you mean? Do you have a proof? Here we go. Muhammad did not see the angel. He heard, he heard the sound of a bell. I just heard one too. It's was very powerful. You know? Even the Christians, they have a song. It's called Jungle Bells, Jungle Bells, Jungles all the way. So what does that mean? This is Quran now? So, and not only that, what make it more funny, that your prophet, he said, that angels will not accompany a person he have with him a bell or a sound of a bell. So, and not only that, even he said that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. Okay, hold on. How the bell is the instrument of shaitan. And then Allah is using the bill to communicate with Muhammad. Do you see it? The Prophet said the bill is one of the musical instrument of shaitan. Okay. How you Muhammad receive Quran? By jungle bills. The angels sometimes come to me with the voice which resembles the sound of a ringing bell. But this is shaitan. He just said that the musical instrument of shaitan is a bell. Is a bell? Okay. The English is funny. Is a bell, not is a bell. Hello? Yeah. So what do you think, Libri? I don't know, bro. You leave Islam, my friend. You are smarter than this. Okay, I have a question for you then. Give me the question. Don't make it hard. Can I pay you before we begin? Because if you give me an harder question, I will be exposed. Can you make it easy? I is a, what do you mean make it easy? And I'm just joking. Just give me the hardest question you have. Okay. So what 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 sin did Jesus die for? What sin he died for? Yeah. What what do you what like we you Muslims when you think? Uh, or when you hear the Christian saying that Jesus died for our sin, what do you like? What do you understand about this statement? How you understand it? The wages of sin are death, so Jesus died for you, so you can get eternal life. So, what sin did He die for? Do you know what does that sin? mean? Do you know what does that mean? When we say Jesus, He died for our sin, what does that mean? I mean, it's pretty. He He died for your sins. So you no, no, no. Him. This is not what this means. No, gave, what it means. Gave you salvation. No, yeah. Jesus, for God, He loved the world. He sent His only begotten Son to save the world. So when we say Jesus died for our sin, which mean, if not us being lost and need to be saved, Christ will not come and will not be crucified. That's what it means. And it doesn't mean that we Christians, we can sin. That's why Jesus said it yeah. clearly that the sinners, the, the fornicators, the liars, the hypocrites, etc., they will not go to heaven. Be holy like your father. So he died for our sin, so we don't do sin. He died for our sin, so he can save us from the life of sin. He died for our sin, that means he came for rescue. Jesus says, I came for the sick, not for the healthy. So we are sick. Our life so is sick. You, you agree Jesus died for all sins, yeah? 
When we say all sins, mean all a human being. For every human being is a sinner. Yeah. Uh huh. So, no, what I mean, what specific sin did he die for? Every type of sin. It or sin, sin or? is sin. Sin is sin. Any anything uh, is called sin. Mean disobedient to God, and those who disobey God, they don't deserve to be with God, which means you will not go to heaven. So, uh, yeah, well. so when you commit sin, you are like a glass. You know, a glass. Each sin you do, you make a crack in your glass. You can make a glue, you can glue it, you can put a tape on it, but the, the crack is there. So when we say Jesus, he forgive our sin, doesn't mean the sin is gone. It's not. The crack are there. But this is the mercy of God. Because of the mercy of God, he gave us a chance. And that's why Jesus said, whoever believe in me and follow me, he will live. Whoever believe in me and die, he will live. So you believe in him. You repent from the life of sin. You reject sin. You fight sin. You resist sin. Then you are part of Christ. Christ did not come to wipe your sin as a license, which means go and sin. Jesus said to the women who was chased by the Jews, go and sin no more. He did not say to her, go and sin as much you like. So when we say he died for our sin, that means he died to save us and to make us Follow him, so we will not live the life of sin, the life of the devil, like Muhammad. Okay. So his his death was necessary for your salvation, yeah. First of all, when we say that his death is necessary, this is just a philosophy of you and him. But the Bible is so clear that God, who loved the world, he sent his only begotten Son. If we killed him, it doesn't mean that he called us to kill him. It's not like Jesus, he sacrificed himself by saying, hey, in order to be saved, he will go, my neck is here, kill me. No, this is not what happened. It's you Muslims who believe in that. You Muslims, you give a blood sacrifice to forgive your sin. It's you. You have even the Eid al-Adha, which means that the Eid of sacrifice. So you sacrifice, if we go in the Quran as an example, you will find that Allah, which is a story taken from the Bible, he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son. Do you know the story? Yep. All right. Why God he asked Abraham to sacrifice his son? Are you asking me? Yes, I'm asking you. It was an act of his to see how faithful he is. Of what? To see how faithful he was. Okay. But then, why Allah, he gave himself a sacrifice? Say that again. He, what? Allah himself, he gave sacrifice. When? In chapter 37, verse 107. But this is this is not what I'm asking. I'm asking about Jesus' death. I'm Why explaining you to you. Up? I'm explaining to you. Your God, you see what you are trying to imply on us, it's in your religion, not in ours. Your God Himself is sacrificing. Your God is giving sacrifice. The Muslim they say, Why God need to give sacrifice to God? Is that correct? They say, Okay, okay, hold on. So Christ He sacrificed Himself to who? To Himself? So he himself can forgive you? And they say this is stupid. But this is not what happened. This is, this is not this what is happened. Not this is what happened in your religion. In your religion, Allah himself, he gave azim sacrifice. Not only a sacrifice. Do you see the word mighty in the screen? Yeah. If it is just a sheep, how it is a mighty? But this is, you're still going off topic, bro. I'm no, asking no, no, about we are Jesus. not. We are not. We are talking yeah. about sins and sacrifice. Yeah, no. you didn't even let me state my point. I, I asked a question, then we you know, went we off topic. We are going step by step with your point. We are going step. I am answering every step of point you are saying. Okay, okay give, so can okay, I you know what I'm not going to talk. Give me the question. Finish it. Go ahead. 
Okay, so I'm saying his his death was not necessary because there were ways to be forgiven in the Old Testament, like sacrifice. When you are done, so let if me it know. was not ne when let me know when you are done. Go huh? ahead, continue. I'm saying Jesus' death was not necessary necessary because in the Old Testament there was ways to be forgiven, like giving sacrifices, doing charity. So if you think about it, the Father sent down Jesus to be died, and it was not necessary. Then that would contradict his nature. Who is the one who said necessarily and not necessarily? where you are getting this word from? Okay, you Google the definition. No, you tell me what you say necessarily and what necessarily. What necessarily? What do necessary. you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean it by necessarily? It means for it to be needed. His death was not needed. Needed by who? It was, it was, it, the, the act was needed. By, by who? By God? Jesus. No, because you, you know, you are saved or not. It's you who's going to be lost. It's going, you who's going to go to hell. When you speak about necessarily, it doesn't go to God. For God is above necessity. He is the one who created yeah, you. Was... He, can, he created He can create other nations. He can create other people. He can create other earth. There's nothing that's called necessary for God. But what God teaches us, yeah. But God teach us that for God he loved the world. That was his love, his mercy. It's not because it is necessarily for God. God do not need you, do not need me. Who am I? He saved me, he didn't save me. What would do to him? If I am saved or not saved, how that can change anything for God? He will have better bread. He will have a better air conditioning. He will have a better life. Saving me doesn't make any difference for God. So, when you use the word necessarily, you are going blind, forgetting that it is for our benefit, not for his. So coming of a Christ is necessarily for my safe and secure, not for him. It's not for God. When, yeah, the, doctor, I'm saying it was... when the doctor is called for a person is dying, the doctor is called for necessarily of the sick or for the doctor. Who need the doctor? The sick or the doctor? The sick. Okay. And who is the sick in the case of a human being? God or a human being? Human being. Exactly. So when we have in the Bible it says, and my God will supply every need of yours. According to the to his riches in a glory in Christ. So God he created us. God is our Father, and the Father He supply us. He supply us with our wealth, with our food, with our health, with our body, with our blood. And the Father who supply us, He don't want us to go to hell. So it is His love and His mercy. It is our necessarily for us the love of God. But God will gain nothing if we go to hell. There was other not. ways to go to heaven in the Old Testament. What? There were other ways to go to heaven in the Old Testament before Jesus' death. Uh, first of all, this is false. Because if you go, as, as an example, if you go to the book of Genesis, chapter 5, and then read the names of the children of Adam all the way to Noah, you will see that every name of the children of Adam present a stage of salvation through Christ. You, you can, can go give right. sacrifices. No, 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 hold on. You see, even in the names it says his death will bring comfort to mankind. The death of who? The death of the Messiah. So even in the Old Testament is speaking about the Messiah, even in the book of Isaiah. We have more than 360-something uh, 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 prophecy about Jesus. And, you know, the funny is, I find it, that you are trying to find out if Jesus' death is necessary, but you don't want to find out if Muhammad's death is necessary. Why Muhammad was sent? To do what uh, exactly? Why are you going on top of it, Huh? I'm not talking about Muhammad. I'm talking no problem, about no problem. But if when you question, well, the name of the Messiah is mentioned in your Quran. We have to connect the dot.
So the Messiah came to save us. And in the process of saving us, the Messiah was crucified. And the Messiah did not call the Jews, says, kill me, because this is the way I can save you. No, this has never happened. The Messiah did not commit suicide. He did not shoot himself in the head. The Messiah never killed himself and never asked anyone to kill him. But the Messiah, he knew what will happen. He knew in the process of saving mankind, mankind will kill him. And he said, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they are doing. And he said, I lay down myself. Nobody can take it from me. Which means if you want, he will never allow them to do it. But because of his love, he's extreme with his love. Even when they killed him, he wanted to prove to them, even when you kill me, I can save you. So he came back from the tomb. No tomb can hold the Messiah. No grave can catch the Messiah. No death can take the Messiah. So he came back and the disciples, they saw his wound and they said, we saw his wounds and we touched it. So the Messiah, even by death, he confirmed who, him, who he is again. For his death was just additional proof of the nature and the identity of a Christ. Which means, I'm not now speaking just about a man who is giving me lectures about love and saving and salvation. Well, he himself, he went to death, he came back from death, so I can trust him for who he over death by death. He overcome death. The Messiah, he proved to us by his death that his promise of salvation is true. I can promise people right now, it says, if you believe in me, you will live. Eh, talk is cheap. What do you mean by believe in him? Believe his will? Believe what? What do you mean by believe in him? Yeah, believe in You just said if you believe in him, you won't die, yeah? The Messiah said, whoever believe in me and he die, he will live. In the Bible, yeah? Yeah. And what about your Quran? Okay, well, what, do, what does he mean by believe in him? Like believe he is real? Believe in him that he is God. It's a must. Man, many, many, many people believe he is God, but they don't go to heaven. This is your, uh, who, who are you to decide? Are you God? Is Satan going to be in heaven? Who? Satan. Satan believes he is God. No, Satan, he don't believe. A believer. He believes Jesus. No, no, listen. God. You have a misunderstanding of belief. Belief is not about knowing. Belief is about obeying and following. So if I know that God is a true, and yes, I don't want to believe, I don't want to follow him, that means I'm not a believer. A believer is someone who follow, not someone he say, I believe. This is only happening in Islam. The devil, the devil in Islam, he's a Muslim. Is that correct? Hmm? The devil in Islam is a Muslim. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. The devil now is a believer or not? He's a Muslim. And you said yes. Is he going to go to heaven? No. Where in the Quran says Iblis will not go to heaven? And why he will not? If he believe. I'm using I your logic. Find one for you. I'm using your logic. A second ago, you gave me a logic. But you yourself, you don't agree with your own logic. So now Shaitan, he called Allah my Lord. And Shaitan, he say in Arabic, Qala Rabbi bima agwaitani. You deceive me. Not put me wrong in the translation here. It's a, it's a lie. So in your religion, the only true Shaitan is Allah. For Iblis never did wrong. It was Allah who made him do wrong. It was a fate and a destiny. And here you see the major core of differentiation between the cult of Islam and Christ. Christ, he came to save us from our faith, from our sin. Allah in Islam, he decided to mislead us. Even, even shaitan himself is a victim of Allah. Imagine even shaitan is a victim. Can you read for me the verses in the front of your screen? O oh my Lord, because you misled me, I shall indeed adorn the path of error for them, mankind on earth, and I shall mislead them all. Who mislead Shaitan? Allah. 
Did Jesus mislead Shaitan? No. You see the difference? So the core of Islam is that God in Islam is Satan. For the first evil doer was Allah, not Satan. Satan is just a reaction. You misled me, I will mislead them. He made an agreement with Allah. In fact, Allah, he says to him, so good. Okay, go ahead. He didn't say no. He said, okay, go ahead. If I am the one who mislead you, and then you mislead someone else, be honest with me, who you blame? Who people should blame? If I mislead you, and which means I made you believe in me. Imagine here the word mislead. Mean what? Mean you made me believe in you. So when Shaitan he say you misled me, that means he's saying I trusted you, Allah. I believe in you. It turned to be you are just a piece of garbage. And because you are a liar, a misleader, I'm going to revenge from you by doing it to them. How that can be God? This is against the nature of God. God in Islam is the first devil. The devil himself is a victim. So you are following the devil, Lepre. Face it, your God is the devil. He is the one who misled Shaitan. Shaitan is a victim. Are you speechless? I don't know, bro. What do I know? I mean, come on, admit it. You are the man. I trust that you are a man who have dignity and you are willing to say the truth. Yeah. All right. So say it. Shaitan is Allah. He is Allah. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm happy for you decide to leave Islam and agree with me that Allah is shaitan. I'm happy for you. I invite you, brother, to invite right. to, I invite you right now to accept the Messiah as your savior. Okay, I have one more question for you. All if right. you can answer it, then I will. All right. You know, um, Mark chapter 16. All right. Yeah, the, um, the ending from verse 8. It's not any of it's not in any of the codex or Venaticus or even Sinaticus. It's not any, in any of them. It must my, have been added. My, my friend, if there is verses are not exist in certain area, doesn't mean they are not exist. Uh, to make it, uh, you know what? I'm just going to be generous with you. Let us say Mark, all of it is not exist. Mark, the whole book of Mark is not exist. That will not change anything. So, if there is two verses that are not exist in some places, or they are exist, is that what will confirm who is a Christ? The whole book confirm who is a Christ. So, if we are trying to assume, if we are trying to assume that there is somebody adding verses or somebody taking off verses, that is assumption. However, even if that is a true, that does not affect who is the Messiah because. The Bible is written after Christ, not the opposite. Christ is the message. He is the Word. He is God, not the Bible. The Bible is to follow as words of teaching, just to go through generation. Christ is to follow as Savior. So when somebody says there is some verses are not mentioned here or there, that does not mean they are not exist. You know, just to give you a little example 200 years ago if you go back in the new testament you will find that the word jesus does not exist it's not exist there's no jesus what jesus the language changed letters are added so now we have word is called jesus does that mean jesus never exists 
Not long time ago, they used the word used the word happy as for gay. You say gay. If somebody say he's a gay, he means he's happy. Today you say it, it means something totally different. But the word gay still means happy, it does not a change. But the culture of people change. And we follow Christ not because of a book is written, for Christ is a living God, is not a, a person written in a book. The proof of a Christ is not a book. The proof of God is not a book. A book is just about he said, she said, and history reporting to us what happened 2,000 years ago. So we have four books giving us four dimension. And then we have books telling us the stories of the disciples of Jesus. Every single page on the Bible confirm who is Jesus. So if I take now a page of the Bible, anyone, John, Mark, Luke, I rip it off. Let us say I will take 10 pages from everyone and rip them off. And I am a king, you know, I decide to delete all uh, the pages I don't like. Nobody can change the Bible. For the Bible was the most published book ever in history, even written in stones. Mosaic art. The mosaic art was telling the stories of every disciple of Jesus. It is a written language by art, not by letters. So when somebody says there is uh, two verses here are not found in there, we can go to scholarship to study it and we will find that this is, does not affect anything in Christianity. And there's no proof that they are not true to exist. There's no proof they are not exist. How can you trust them if they're not in the manuscripts? No, no, you are saying they are not in the manuscript, but do we have all the manuscript anyway? We are judging by what we have, what we receive right now. But when they copy, you see, when they start copying the Bible, they did not save the old, like nobody was thinking about, okay, you know what, 2,000 years from now, those will be a treasure. So people, when they copy, a copy, and the old copy is obviously is not good to, co to they, they, you know, they don't have good quality. Even if you have good quality papers these days, if you put them in the shelves for 2,000 years, without vacuuming in the air and from bacteria and from humidity, the book will be damaged immediately by time. So they have a very, very cheap quality written books. They are poor. The Christians in the first 300 years, they were very poor. The first time they have a book of a quality was in the time when the king become a Christian. Before that, there's no quality. So they were writing, and when they copy a copy the previous copy is not important no more in fact they are copying it because the previous copy is too old to touch the papers are ripping off there's no not, not even papers so when we say that the manuscript is what we have is not what is was exist it's what we can hand our hand on it and those people when they make a copy why do they want to keep the old copy for what the new copy is made because the old copy is not usable no more. Not because they are, you know, making a copy in the old days, it takes a lot of work. Because everything written by hand, word by word, dot by dot, letter by letter. Not like now, you post a, a Microsoft file and then one click and you have a book ready to print. This is not how it works. So they don't keep old copies. For simply, the reason to make a new copy because the old copy already is not good to use. So it's time to make a new copy. And we believe in the Bible, not because of copy and manuscript only. What if there's no manuscript? I did not learn about my history, about my family from books. I did not. Because if I depend on books of history, any books of history, victorious, they write history. Muhammad, he won the war. Muhammad is the most amazing man. Muhammad lost the war, people will write. Muhammad is the scumbag. If Hitler, he won the war, people will write books about how amazing Hitler is. Hitler, he lost the war. Everybody is speaking how bad Hitler is. It's about who the winner and the loser. The truth come to you 
about your history is when generation carry from generation tell you what is reported to them my mom taught by her mom her mom taught by her mom her mom taught by her mom and no one is lying to their children there is no reason so Christianity is not a book and never was and will never be Jesus said that the heaven and the earth will be destroyed but my word will not but when he said that there's not a single word is written not a single letter was written in a book so the word of God is not a book is written is the might of God is the promise of God is the ability of God God always will not leave himself without witnesses anything else no so what do you think about accepting the Messiah as your Savior I guess so you accept yeah. I'm into that. We are very thankful for the Lord that our brother here, he's, you know, he joined us today as a Muslim. And he agreed with us that Allah is the devil and the Messiah is his own savior. We pray to the Lord to guide him, to take him from his hand, to bless him, to show him the truth. And the truth will set him free. And today he saw the truth. And we pray he will read more. For Christianity is not just a statement you say Shahada and you are saved. Christianity is a journey with God, is a journey with the Lord, is a journey with the good God, not just God. There's many gods. There's Satan is God, money is God, sex is God. God can be you, can be me if we worship ourselves. But there's only true God. Everything created by Him and for Him, that is the Messiah.